Samuel or Lauren, can you hear us? There we go. I I can hear you now. It goes in and out. Ah, okay. Well, here, let me let me try bringing my microphone a little bit closer. That might help, huh? That might help. Let's see. I can hear you clearly now, though. Okay. Yeah, a All lot right. better. A lot better. Okay, very good. Sorry about that, guys. Obviously, the 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 chair is uh, technically challenged this morning. Sorry about that. Okay, very good. So by my count, we have uh, we only have eight, uh, and, and uh, my counselor and I were talking about this a moment ago. Currently, we have a total of eight commissioners of record. Uh, we we will be talking about uh, filling out some slots here in a minute. And if my count is correct, I think all eight are here. So that definitely gives us a, a quorum. So we're ready to proceed. Okay. So next item on the agenda is the approval of the November meeting minutes. Those meeting minutes were previously provided via email to everyone here. Uh, I do know that if you recall that uh, counselor did point out that there was a, an edit that needed to be made and those uh, that edit was made and the, the meeting minutes were resent. Are there any questions or comments about those edited meeting minutes from the commissioners here or online? No question. Since there was an edit, let's go ahead and have a, uh, a vote to approve those. So do we have a motion to approve the edited meeting minutes, please? Motion by Commissioner France, is there a second? Second by Commissioner Smith, is there any further discussion on the meeting minutes? If not, all those in favor of approval say aye. aye. Or, raise, or, or wave your hand for those of you online. Okay, any opposed? All right, very good. The edited meeting minutes are approved. Very good. Next up on the agenda is citizen communication. I don't see that we have any citizen communication today. Were you expecting any citizen communication today, Director Gouch? Okay, no citizen communication today. All right, let's move on to quickly staff reports and we're gonna turn it over to Director Couch for some remarks and then reports. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you. Um, just wanted to make a couple introductions of some new staff. Um, over here on my left is uh, Justin Dorsey. He's our new Deputy Director of Operations. So it's a, a long-term uh, position that we had vacant that we needed to fill. So it's one of our top three uh, Deputy Directors. So happy to introduce him. And uh, he could say a few words when we get to his staff reports, but he'll be reporting out on operations now instead of myself so that's great and also we have mrs hatfield back here by eric mayfield which is our new to new data um, special projects coordinator so she'll be um, doing all of our data for accreditation and for all kinds of good reporting that we need to show that we're doing what we're doing um, which is great to have i um, excited for that position as well so and then on top of that um, Commissioner Smith asked us to give a report on vacancies, and so we have on your um, desk there a report from January of 2022 and then one of December. So it shows all of our positions. There are some minor changes in the descriptions of the titles because I have reclassified and changed some positions over the year, and um, we have successfully um, increased or decreased our vacancies by nine this year, and we have more uh, to go on that as well. Um, so that's the report. If there's any questions in regards to um, that report, I'll be happy to answer it. And, um, and then we'll go into our um, staff reports, uh, starting with uh, administration, which administration is not here today, but you have their report. Um, Angela Nelson is out um, from a surgery, and so we'll just move to uh, recreation. Rwanda. Good morning. Um, recreation division has, has, like Leland said, we've been filling, um, trying to fill out our vacancies. Um, we have. Um, position that we're trying to hire for uh, assistant faci facility supervisor at our tennis facility. Uh, we've hired an assistant fitness center uh, supervisor, uh, fitness 
center supervisor assistant uh, at Jim Daly and an assistant fitness specialist position. Uh, they started this week. Um, and our golf position, we have um, selected a candidate for that, and that position is in our equity review status. Uh, our community centers are um, gearing up for the Christmas break, so they will be open during the Christmas holidays um, for any of you that will like participate in different activities and programs they got going on there. Um, we are currently preparing our, faci our facilities and staff for potential inclement weather, uh, which will start on tomorrow. Um, we will open up the East Little Rock uh, Community Center as a shelter. And so we'll be open starting on Thursday from 3 p.m. until Saturday at 3 p.m. So hopefully um, you guys get all snuggled up and ready for this weather we have coming in. Um, our aging and active senior programs is on Christmas break and they'll be uh, back on January the 3rd. So no programs are going on right now for our seniors. Um, <clears throat> our therapeutic recreation division also is on spring break until uh, January the 6th. MacArthur Museum holiday uh, musical at the Arsenal has been rescheduled. It, it's a recital has been rescheduled to January the 8th. 2023. So that concludes my report. If any questions, any questions for uh, uh, Ms. Robinson? No. Okay. Okay. Go ahead, Justin. And if you would just say a few words about your background and um, introduce yourself. Okay. Um, Good afternoon, everybody. I'm just really excited to be here. Uh, again, my name's Justin Dorsey. Um, brand new, so this report may be just a little bit brief as I'm still trying to learn what to report on and, and kind of the things. But uh, my background, I've worked for the Arkansas State Park System. So I come from the State Park System um, with a little over 12 years with them um, in different various management positions kind of all over the state. So. Um, from Central Arkansas, Southwest Little Rock area. So just excited to kind of be back home and uh, working here with the city. So excited on that. Um, you have my report in front of you of just kind of some of the projects that I've got summarized. Uh, the big ones that I'm aware of right now that we're working on um, and really excited about one of them is Canis Park, uh, the basketball courts being completed there. There's some other materials on site that's just about ready to, to move forward with that, uh, just waiting on some stuff to be done with some temporary parking issues, um, and we'll be ready to move forward with that. And then also wrapping up the Western Hills, uh, the playground areas is pretty much completed now. Uh, just got to do some finalizing work to that to get that ready to go, and then hopefully the, the pavilion and other aspects of that park will be coming in uh, shortly after the first of the year. So we're really excited about that. And then the other big thing we've got uh, our operation improvement crew working on uh, is the Banana Sculpture Plaza um, on the River Trail at Murray Park. So uh, hopefully that'll be wrapping up also just right after the first of the year. I'm just waiting on some concrete and stuff to, to come in to finalize that. Um, so uh, that that concludes kind of the highlights of, of that report. If anybody has any questions, I'll, I'll try to answer anything uh, that I can. <laughs> Any questions for Mr. Dorsey? Welcome aboard, Mr. Dorsey. Glad to have you here. Looking forward to uh, you uh, working with uh, the crew and looking forward to future reports from you uh, in, in the coming year. Yes, sir. Excited. Thank you. All right. All right. Maintenance. Um, JP, if you can give us a quick update on maintenance and the latest projects. Okay. We, uh, we're we trying to finish up leaf season. Everything kind of waited late this year. so. You know, look at your yard, and we're having the same problem on a large scale in a park. So we're trying to catch up, making good progress on that. Um, we pulled off today and part of yesterday to help the uh, golf courses. They have to cover their greens because of the inclement weather coming in, so that we don't lose that asset. So my crews have been out working with them, and um, we've about, we were they were finishing up just a little while ago. So we should have them protected, and then we'll go back in later next week and pull, help them pull those off. I mean, we have the largest manpower area so it's really nice that we can come in and you know help our, each department try and get things done um we're we're trying to go through our 
deep clean cycle on these parts, try to get into them and start cleaning and polishing some areas that we haven't done in a while, try, trying to do them about four to five a week. Hopefully we'll have them all done this fall. We also have some other areas we'll be working on. So um, biggest issues, like I said, is trying to finish up and trying to get ready for the weather. We're uh, pulling in and making sure, all of, double checking all of our RPZs and our bathrooms, things like that, to make sure they're drained because with as cold as it's going to be, it's going to be, this is going to be a damage event. So we've got to, we're trying to do everything we can to make sure that our stuff is covered and hopefully we've gotten everything we should. And if we have any other, you know, hope we can get through this and then it's supposed to warm back up and we'll be in better shape. If y'all have any questions, let me know. Very good. All right. Uh, any questions for uh, Mr. Rogers? Good luck with the, uh, the preparation. It's definitely going to be cold, like Shawanda said. All right, very good. Uh, any the, all reports? Okay, uh, let's see. Moving on. Well, actually, before I move on from staff reports, just a quick note. Let it be known that today is our uh, illustri our, our director's birthday. So happy birthday, Leland! Do you want us to sing happy birthday to you? Should we go on? Should we go on video recording singing? <laughs> Here's JT. He's going to sing it for you. Day <laughs> He's still going. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, <laughs> dear Leland. This is going to be on YouTube, you know. <laughs> you. Oh, very good. And soloist, uh, JT, very good. Nice, nicely done there. All right. Uh, A quick question. Yes, questions. For the East Little Rock Center, what is, how many people can that hold, or is there an anticipated number of folks that are looking I know you guys said last time that you were working with the van, maybe on directing okay, so people that way. So, a bit. yeah, and you're you're referring to the warming center. Yeah, yeah. So there is there that discussion has come about, and we haven't had any challenges in the past with maximizing the facility. But there is something where they look at the gym space that we're utilizing, and they'll say each space can hold so much. And I didn't I didn't get that report. Um, do you know, Shawanda? Um, no, but we, at Dunbar last year, we held about 80 people. Um, but each night, the, the attendance changed. So first night, it was maybe like around 20. Every night, it increased. So up until the last night, when it got really, really cold, we got up to about 80 there. So we are anticipating about um, 30 to 50 as of right now. We have an emergency meeting right after this meeting, so maybe I can get that answer back to you guys, but we don't have the exact number yet. And they just call in and say that they would like shelter, and so the van coordinates all of that, and then they show up at East Little Rock. I appreciate the question, because it is an operation, and we have staff that stays there all night, police that stay there all night, and emergency management that stays there all night, and we also manage um, dogs and cats and anything that anybody brings. Um, we're really open to anything and above. And then we typically run from what, seven to seven, seven in the evening to seven in the morning. But right now we're, we're staying open for the whole time period, right? Which Thursday is started. Through Thursday through Sunday. Yes. Three o'clock. Because Thursday, of the weather. Saturday to Saturday at three. Saturday. Saturday. Yeah. So, so the, the band's getting the word out, I'm sure. Is there any other ways that the information's getting out? Uh, yes. They're doing a press. The city does a press release. And then that will go out, yeah. It's already out. Yeah. And I saw that um, the van was coordinating with two or three different churches uh, to run the, an additional church van to pick up people to bring them there. Correct. Right. And then if the weather was to get bad, um, we've already got it set up to where a public course will help with the road clearing and make it a priority as well as uh, move our staff around as needed to get people there and stuff like that. So it's a, it's a, we, we went from not being a very well oiled machine to, I think we've got it down pretty well. Now we have a plan policy that's and very appreciative to everybody that's been involved. In. How do you decide on which community center to use for warming sense? Well, we decided on East Little Rock because it's one of our um, underutilized facilities. So, yes, that's kind of how we decided. But we did walkthroughs of uh, each location. Um, Dunbar was sufficient for a while, but then um, it had some open spaces that they didn't want um, the um, 
clients to be in those areas, so they found a smaller scale of facility to fit that need for safety purposes. We, it's also helpful that it's at East Little Rock because we can change our programming a little bit since we have very little there, and so it doesn't disrupt. Whereas at uh, Dunbar, we would have to close down different programs. Um, this is also another place where I'm considering looking at generators in different facilities for emergencies. Believe it or not, we don't have generator capacity in any of our centers. So as we're moving forward into the future with our bond money and Im improvements, um, considerations of generators and stuff like that to run these facilities is because we also utilize them for uh, cooling centers uh, in the summer times as well when we have high heat indexes. Right, and we do have two shelters. One is in place at, um, uh, and that's a storm shelter, I'm saying, at uh, Dunbar Community Center and um, Ottenheimer Community Center. And not to mention Jericho Way, which is our city um, homeless center as well. So, and then also on this, just another little tidbit of information, the Barton Coliseum is the very first um, place for the van to utilize and when that's booked or something is already inside of it where it would not function then the East Little Rock kicks in if if there's something wrong with East Little Rock then Dunbar kicks in so we kind of have a, a list of how we go about it yep. is there separate money set aside for the city to do this or is it just in the original budget or how does that typically <laughs> Yeah, there's there's not a substantial amount of cost. Um, I, I guess the van is covering some of the the costs. Um, there is a little bit of uh, overtime cost, um, but nothing nothing significant. No, I mean if it was running for months or something like that, that would be a whole other consideration. But that's uh, we never plan on it continuing that long. So anyway, thank you. Great questions on on that uh, important uh, activity there, and thank you uh, guys for explaining that. Well, and, and all the involvement in, in that. So, um, season of thanks, we gave thanks for Leland his happy birthday a moment ago. I I, I think I'd also like to give uh, a moment of uh, or give a round of applause or whatever we would to the staff for all the excellent work that you've done this year, and uh, appreciate your your efforts and looking forward to you uh, uh, again in the coming year. So, thank you for your help very much. You guys do a lot of work and don't get a lot of credit, so thank you for that. Um, and also thank you to the commissioners. I think this is the first time we've had 100% attendance in quite some time. So, you know, thank you to all the commissioners for being here. We're eight out of eight. That's absolutely primo. Uh, we're going to hopefully uh, hopefully see that that continues uh, in the new year. Okay, moving on to uh, old business. I guess, Leland, let's let's turn to you and then we'll cover the, uh, the uh, commissioners in the next segment. Sure. So... Um, there's not any huge updates on any of the old business. Um, be happy to answer any questions, but currently I am building a um, kind of a war chest of projects for the ARPA funding and bond funding. Um, and, and a perfect example of something that just changed um, overnight was our um, air conditioning heating system went out at Jim Daly in our indoor pool. Staff went in there and it looked like there was a cloud hanging above the pool. Uh, it's not funny, I shouldn't laugh, but anyway, this was a system that we knew was on our list for replacement, um, and the goal was to use our ARPA funding or bond funding to do that. Um, if we didn't have those funding sources, this would be a real uh, challenge for us to, to come up with. This is a 200 plus, maybe 300 plus system that we have to, to uh, replace, but um, thankfully now that we have this funding from our city uh, board that we were going to look at replacing it with a top of the line brand new system for the whole indoor pool. So, when will that system go in, Leland? Is there a timeline for that? No, as soon as possible because yeah. it's interrupting our uh, facility. But it's um, we have a long way to go on that. We have to get engineering involved. We have to get a proposal. We have to get board approval. A lot of different processes. But um, that's just one project. And then just in general, I'm I'm working on many different quotes and projects and you know as we go forward as a commission here as a group in discussion i'd be happy to discuss projects um 
as Justin gets more involved in projects, he could report out on projects as well. Um, but we're building uh, quotes and all kinds of different things. And the goal is um, is that I'll be going back out to the uh, public in January and discussing different projects and, and ones that people put in their request for input for projects and looking at what we can afford, what we can't, and how that goes about. Um, and just one other thing that I'm, this is a good time to note, which I didn't have on the agenda. We just we did get awarded a um, a new outdoor rec grant. We apply for kind of any grant opportunity we can. And so, in terms of talking about funding, we got uh, funded one hundred and eighty thousand dollars for a new playground at Boyle Park, and we have a city match of two hundred and fifty. So I'm hopeful we can add all that together with a little bit of bond money and make a new destination playground there at Bull Park, which will be really exciting. We utilize outdoor rec for quite a bit, as well as another grant. We had um, our trail coordinator apply for a, um, a grant through Trailblazers, which is going to help if we get awarded it, will help us with some uh, bicycle, um, actual bikes that we can put in our community center so we can start a new program for, um, bikes on uh, kids on bikes and and introducing uh, different activities on bikes to uh, children in our community centers. So, so just applied for that. Hopeful that we were able to get that um, as well. So anyway. any questions for uh, the director on projects with ARPA or bond funding? All right. Very good. Thank you, director, for that update. New business, very quickly, uh, mentioned it earlier, we, we are down to eight commissioners. Uh, we do have the ability to allow for 11. So uh, speaking with Councilor about this a moment ago, we, we do want to go ahead and proceed with adding or looking to add three new commissioners as soon as possible. Uh, Director Couch and I were talking about that as well. We're gonna try to get that uh, on the docket so that the city board clerk and the mayor can hopefully get us three uh, replacements on the, the board or the commission rather as quickly as possible. So, and for those of you that uh, remember, you'll, you'll know this already, if, for those of you that don't, to get on the board, you have to complete the online application uh, or send a paper copy into the city clerk's office. Uh, the city clerk's office vets all those and then ultimately uh, uh, appointments are made by the, the board and the mayor. So if you know family and friends and about who are looking for opportunities to serve, not only on the Parks and Recreation Commission, there are plenty of other commissions out there. Please do encourage them to do so. I know that, uh, you know, we have had trouble in the past year uh, uh, for keeping some of our members on the commission, and I know other commissions are, are feeling the same way too. So if there are other people that you know looking for volunteer opportunities, please do encourage that. That said, uh, let's move into the subcommittee reports. Now, I know that our previous uh, social media and outreach chairperson unfortunately moved uh, away and is no longer with us. I don't think I have heard any kind of report for social media or outreach. Did you have anything you wanted to mention this, this month? No. We will probably uh, in the new year uh, uh, look to appoint uh, a new person to kind of head up that committee. So. If uh, any of the commissioners here, any of the eight of us uh, are interested in perhaps being the chair for that, uh, we can certainly discuss that at our next next meeting. Okay, moving on to master plan. So let's turn to the master plan uh, committee chair, Linda Smith. Commissioner Smith, for an update, please. Thank you. We did not um, meet as a group. Uh, there are four people on the master plan, uh, myself, uh, Sam Ellis, Cannon, and Ben. Uh, we have scheduled a meeting uh, for uh, just after the new year before the next uh, commission meeting. We have an agenda. We will make sure there's public notice given. Um, and, and the main thing we want to look at uh, in the group is with the master plan, how do we make sure that that master plan stays relevant and aligned as we look towards new projects coming from ARPA and bond funding and public input there. So uh, looking to do that. Um, and I would just uh, take a moment to encourage us to, uh, when we're trying to identify new people for this commission and encouraging folks to apply, uh, I would really hope that we could have some diversity on this uh, commission. Uh, I, I feel like uh, at one point we were much more diverse and we are not. Uh, but that's all uh, reflective of who applies. So please encourage people you know that would be good on Parks and Rec uh, to apply here. And I'll have a, a more complete report after we meet again in January. 
Great, perfect. Thank you, Commissioner Smith. Any any questions for Commissioner Smith on the Master Plan Subcommittee? Okay, then let's move on to Parks Conservancy. Uh, uh, we, we've also lost the, the Parks Conservancy uh, Committee Chair as well. Uh, just a quick, I'll, I'll provide a quick update on that. Uh, we, we The Parks Conservancy is working on the, the membership program, the Friends program. That is expected expected to to go live in January. The, the actual January date is to be determined, but please uh, do look for another update next month. Uh, I'll I'll, pro I'll try to provide some more information about how uh, uh, people can join the member program, become active and uh, engaged, and of course do some fundraising, which is ultimately what we're trying to accomplish with the City Parks Conservancy, the 501c3, the official charitable nonprofit arm of Little Rock Parks and Recreation. Any questions on Parks Conservancy? No? Um, okay. Just, yes. Matt, it, yes, go we, ahead. We looked at any um, comparable Friends of the Parks programs, either in the state or nearby states. Yes, absolutely. That is very much a consideration that's being uh, given by the city, the, the Parks Conservancy Board. We're looking at membership programs, not only here in the state of Arkansas, but in also uh, uh, cities in the region that are of uh, similar size and whatnot to understand what uh, is being offered and how it's being offered and where we might start the program and how we might grow the program in the future. So we're taking a, a short term view of getting the program up and going. Um, it, it's it's the old uh, crawl, walk, run scenario where we're going to get it up and going. We're going to have uh, some uh, some basic membership uh, in the coming year, and then as we see how that program continues to grow, we'll see about expanding the program in the next uh, three to five years. Okay. That sounds exciting. It is. It will be. Okay. Very good. Uh, then. The next point under, under subcommittee reports is discussing the January meeting here. So, Director Couch, we were saying that there's a, a conflict. You want to speak to that? Uh, absolutely. So there's just a conflict really for myself. I guess there's a director retreat uh, that I've been requested to attend on the exact same day, which is a all day retreat for myself. Um, and so I would pr like to propose to the group to consider January 18th as a, which is the next week, which is a Wednesday, if that's doable. Okay, so there's a proposal to move the January meeting from Wednesday the 11th to Wednesday the 18th. Is there a motion on the floor to uh, move the meeting from the 11th to the 18th? So moved. So moved by Commissioner Smith. Is there a second? Second by, I think that was uh, Commissioner France. Any any discussion on moving the meeting from the 11th to the 18th, noting that we will, of course, abide by all of the notification uh, uh, protocols and policies? Correct. Um, the city has a new um, public relations manager, um, I believe Aaron Sadler, and we'll just need to keep him apprised of the change. Okay, very good. Thank you for that, Counselor. We'll definitely keep... Uh, Mr. Sadler up to date on that. So if there's no further discussion on that, all those in favor of moving the meeting from the 11th to the 18th say aye or raise your hand. Any opposed? All right, very good. Motion carries. So we will move the meeting from the 11th to the 18th. And I think uh, I'm, I'm going to probably turn or look at Mr. Eric uh, and, and ask if you can help us communicate that date change uh, from to uh, Mr. Sadler uh, that will change from the 11th to the 18th. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Okay, and then under new business uh, 6B golf tournament. So we're going to turn to Commissioner Eldridge for a report. We have a new date um, for the golf tournament. It's going to be May 19th. So if everybody could mark their calendars for that date. Um, we were having trouble with having the tournament the Friday before Memorial Day weekend. And so I spoke with um, George Earls down at the golf club um, down at Rebsman and he had made the 19th open, which I think is probably um, a pretty desirable date uh, because it keeps it in the same month that we've traditionally had it. 
and it's only a week ahead of time. I think it's also better because kids will still be in school for the most part. And so I think people will be still hanging around town and not trying to, to get away um, at the beginning of the summer. So I'm hopeful that we have a little bit more attendance um, with that new date. And um, as we get closer, you know, one of the big asks will be to, to, you know, reach out to friends and family. And, and if you have any golf, uh, avid golfers in, in, in your life to ask them to sign up because it benefits. Um, well, I think that this time last year or around last year, we decided that it would benefit uh, summer kids programs, if I'm not mistaken. Um, with that said, I'm working on coming up with a sponsorship um, schemes, different levels of sponsorships and what those levels would mean for potential sponsors. Um, the price, the, the buy-in for the sponsorships would still be um, pr pretty low compared to other golf tournaments in the area. And that would be consistent with um, our registration fees, which are also low. Um, the fact that it is a city uh, tournament, um, we want people to come, we want people to be interested, and we want to tap into sponsors um, who may not have the opportunity to sponsor um, other larger programs. And so I'm hoping to have that sort of finalized um, by next month and we can go forward in spreading the word to small businesses um, and other people who might be good um, and appropriate sponsors of, of the tournament. And again, I'd be asking y'all to, to help reach out to um, potential sponsors um, like I would be potential golfers. And I'm hope, hoping that, that when, once we get new members, we can them. Great. Thank you, Commissioner Eldridge. Any any questions for Commissioner Eldridge on the uh, the golf tournament for May the 19th, 2023? Hey, Lauren, does the sponsorships go toward the 501c3 or the city? I'm just from a tax write-off perspective. How would that? We, we have in the last year and maybe the last two years, if Matt might might know that a little bit better, Definitely in the last year, we've been trying to funnel that through the Parks Conservancy. So that also is um, incentive for sponsors to provide um, funds towards the tournament. And I think that going forward, um, we'll come up with a better plan so that anyone who wants to donate or sponsor the tournament can do so um, with a tax deductible um, purpose. Yeah, Lauren, completely agree. And great question, Commissioner France, that 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 has been a, a, a very, um, not necessarily vel very well known option, but we have made that known and we'll probably continue to do that. I know Lauren and I have had some, some more conversations about that uh, as that, that uh, being an option for tax deductibility. So yeah, great question. Any other questions about the golf tournament for uh, Commissioner Eldridge? What was the like targeted goal this last year or what was the, I know so, everything moved around and it was, you know. we. Yeah, we had we had trouble this last year. The year before, I believe we we were able to raise somewhere in the range of ten to fifteen thousand, and I think this last year was closer to five. So, and a lot of that had to do with the team shortage. The year before last, we had teams filling out both flights, and this past year we had to reduce it to one. Um, and again, I think the date might have had something to do with that. Um, but we also had some trouble getting sponsors um, to sign up to sponsor holes and, and, and whatnot. So I'm hoping that by creating a little bit more of a scheme for, for sponsors and some more incentive and making the 501c3 option more known to sponsors, um, we can get more money on the front end and not just rely on registration. And there's an opportunity for us as commissioners to also help promote this and, you know, invite our family and friends, colleagues, coworkers, et cetera, uh, to, to uh, build out a team and participate. So when, when we get closer to the time, I know Lauren's got, she'll, she'll clue us in on how we can all help uh, and, and, and get more teams in. And the, the other, one more thing that I'll note that I think if we can make happen and, and I might need, uh, Leland and Matt's help on identifying the right person to do this and um, 
is trying to find a way to allow people to register online um, and or and or make payments online um, because um, again, it's just it's getting the money up front and knowing that it's there and, and and that we've collected it as opposed to waiting on who shows up on the day of to pay with a credit card. Um, and so I think that that will that that might improve things as well if we're able to figure out a way um, that people can do this all online beforehand. Yeah, Lauren, I think we definitely have, uh, I know you and I have kind of briefly talked about this at some of our past meetings. I think we definitely have an opportunity now with the, the and, and, and to be clear, this is a, this is a Parks Commission's uh, uh, run golf tournament, but we have an opportunity to, to partner with the Parks Conservancy to take advantage of some online tools that are there to Lauren, like Lauren's talking about, take some online event registrations and allow for those kind of uh, online credit card payments in advance. So I think there's some opportunity there. So Lauren, absolutely, let's explore that just a little bit more. Okay. Yes, sir. Is this something that was approved, I guess, clear? The, the golf tournament? Golf tournament is is a standing event that is sponsored by the commission. Uh, it. it I guess we haven't necessarily approved it. It's always been something that com the commission has, uh, has has run each year. That's my question. And I think, you know, the other good thing about the timing of the tournament this year is um, if we do launch, if we are able to launch the Friends of the Parks program um, ahead of time, we can also, you know, um, promote that as well along with the tournament and see, you know, if that inspires any more interest. Um, I think it's a great, um, you know, I don't, I don't think in the past we've done a great job of, of highlighting other parks, um, you know, program initiatives, but I'd like to moving forward, try to highlight that such as the music in the park event that um, that's that I think that was in June of last year. So it's kind of a good time to, try to highlight some things that the park is doing um, in addition to the pro the kids programs that we're trying to raise money for. Um, it's, it's just a good, a good event to try and figure out ways. And I'm, you know, if you guys have ideas to, to celebrate um, all the different parks programs um, during this event. Yep. Thank you very much, Lauren. So commissioner first, will go ahead. Pause and Sure, absolutely. I think I think it's a great conversation to have. You know, I know Lauren has already put a lot of time and effort into planning for the 23 event, but maybe that's an opportunity to have. Yeah, absolutely. An opportunity to have some conversation around whether we want to continue this or if we want to look at something else. Uh, yeah, I think it's a great idea. Let's have that conversation. Okay, Lauren, thank you again so much for all your time and effort into that you have put into this. I know you've put a lot into the planning for the uh, the upcoming year. So thank you. Thank you for taking that on. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, I believe we have reached the item number seven on our agenda here, which is to add or, or look for any agenda items for next meeting. So any commissioners have any agenda items for next month's meeting? Okay. All right, very good. Were there any other uh, agenda items, Director Couch, that, that we needed to add for next month in addition to maybe what we have right here today? Do not. And I think uh, we would want to keep each of the items that we have on, on the agenda um, as, as agenda items for next month in January as well. Um, Perhaps with the discussion of the discussing the January meeting, I don't think we'd want that one on there, but okay, sounds good. Then we'll keep the agenda as is for uh, for January next month. So, uh, Mr. Uh, Eric, thank you for helping us with that. Board liaison feedback. Unfortunately, we don't have our two city board uh, liaisons with us today. I'm sure they're very busy doing other things. So that said, time and place of uh, next meeting. New Year, January the 18th. Remember, we, we did change that, so please note that if you keep the agenda down here instead of the 11th, it is on the 18th. So Wednesday, January the 18th, 2023, here at the Center at University Park, 12 o'clock noon. Leland, where's Captain? 
Meeting adjourned. Go ahead, Lauren. <laughs> Ask Leland where happy hour was. Thank you for these very nice <laughs> notebooks. I appreciate that. Leland, you look great for 35. <laughs> Thank I you. thought it was 29. Yeah, that's 25. 20, 20. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Would love for it to be, right? <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for being here. Thanks, uh, Lauren and Samuel, for being uh, with us uh, virtually. Hopefully, we'll see you guys uh, maybe in person sometime soon. Yes. Thanks, y'all. Thanks, Eric. Yeah. Yeah. Already responded, yes. Can't make money off yeah. golf tournaments. I just had to pick Can't it. make money off golf tournaments? Yeah. My calendar. It was. Uh,